Uh, my name is Munero and I'm from Guinea-Bissau. I born here and living from here. It's just 10 a.m. in the morning and it's already really hot. The roads here are generally just unpaved soil tracks. What's special about Bissau is it's all Portuguese speaking. So all signposts here, Vendese. And when you go over Restaurante, it's all Portuguese. Unlike the neighboring countries where we've been to, Senegal, Mauritania, which are French speaking, and the Gambia, which is English speaking. be able to locate Guinea-Bissau on the map and when it's in the news then all for the wrong reasons truck smuggling civil war but it's actually reasonably safe here I spoke to some Portuguese expatriates they told me they don't even lock the car doors I think we got lucky now with those guys they're giving me a SIM card. They said they need my passport for it. And then I hope they can really activate it. So it was the first time in Africa that they were actually asking for my passport for the registration. But luckily it all went well. It was just a matter of minutes. And now it's lunchtime and I'm heading to a restaurant to grab some local food. I'm eating Bifana no Pau and drinking a Portuguese mineral water. On a Friday at 2 p.m. the old part of Bissau is extremely quiet. You have a lot of colonial buildings, beautiful architecture. Some of the streets have been repaired. Some of the buildings have been renovated, but there are virtually no people. It could be because of the heat, but to be honest, at the moment, I don't feel it that hot. I don't feel it that unpleasant. Now we're heading uh, back towards the main road. And from there, I think we'll be able to see the port and maybe grab some food. They are celebrating what's supposed to be a, a wedding and I asked people if it's possible to take a video and they said no problem. On the Che Guevara Square of Bissau City, the portrait of Che Guevara is still visible. But when you zoom out, you will see on top the statue has been removed. And when you look around yourself, on the other side of the square, you see the French Cultural Center with a European flag, the French flag and the flag of Guinea-Bissau. Uh, my name is Munero and I'm from Guinea-Bissau. I born here and living from here. Yeah. And it is nice to meet you and you know, you always been welcome from here. Thanks. What about your job? What do you do for a living? For living? Yeah. I'm an agent assistant of customers. Mm -hmm. What uh, kind of company? Uh, it's a custom. Custom we call here Alfandige. 
Ah, for the for the port. Yeah, for the port. Yeah. Okay, very interesting. Yeah. Okay, let's head towards the port and find out what's going on there. The next place where we're heading to is the cemetery of Bissau and what you can see here at first when you arrive you have some very beautiful old trees. We have white simple graves in the foreground and then behind you have graves with flowers and gravestones. And when we look closer, all the names are Portuguese names. Fernando, Antonio, and so on. What's always a big surprise when you're in Africa is that suddenly you find graves from Europeans, like this man. John Eckhart from Hamburg and we have another person I think he's called Georg Hirsche also from Hamburg and he died in 1897 here in Bissau Hello. <laughs> In the heart of Bissau Viejo, I found this awesome Portuguese Creole style coffee shop. And since it's almost 37 degrees outside, I decided to have a rest and enjoy a nice croissant. So when you look at the prices in this restaurant and many other restaurants of Guinea-Bissau, you'll be surprised about the high costs. For example, when we check out this menu, you see an espresso will cost you 1,000 sefa, which is 1 euro 50, and a cappuccino will cost you 2,000 sefa, a latte will cost you 1,500 sefa, which is really a lot considering Guinea-Bissau is one of the poorest countries in the world. The reason for this is that this country has not a lot of domestic products, so all products like coffee, mineral water, are usually imported. And this is really driving up prices in this country. This cathedral is one of the landmarks of Bissau, the capital of Guinea-Bissau. Construction started in the 1940s and it was inaugurated in 1950. As you can see here, the style is modern from the outside but it resembles a medieval church from the inside. People with different faiths live largely peacefully together in this country. And so, during my stay, Christians came out at night to celebrate the end of Ramadan together with their Muslim friends. <laughs> 